Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brad, and welcome back to Screamin' Pirate EDC. Uh, today, we're going to be doing another Plunderer Plank. This is a full review if you have not been here before, but before we get into it, let's go and talk about what I have on me today. So first up is my mug. This is from Death Wish Coffee. This is the, I guess, Howl at the Moon Wolf mug is, I think, what they called it. Love it. Very cool design. Next up, um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking what watch I wear because I do wear a watch every day. I have on my Oris 65. This is sporting a strap from Crown and Buckle. All right, set him down. Next is going to be my pouch and what I have inside the pouch. So this is my pouch. This is going to be from Garage Built Gear. Uh, I do have a short that's going to be over all these patches and uh, why I like them. Next, my pin and pry. This is going to be the Beer Bomb by Notorious EDC. And this is going to be the Fisher Space Pin in Raw Brass. There you go, guys. All right, after that, my coin is going to be the Stay the Course coin. And this light is going to be from Prometheus Designs. Very, very nice stuff, guys. And then finally, my Hank is going to be the Screaming Pirate EDC Hank. Uh, there will be a link in the bio for this Hank. Uh, everyone purchased does help the channel. Good stuff here. Nice materials. All right. All that's out of the way. What knife are we talking about? We are going to look at the Null Knives Raiden. Now, I am one of the last reviewers to get this knife. Um, this came directly from uh, Null Knives to me. Uh, I know a lot of other people, such as Metal Complex, etc., have had this. Uh, if you've watched their reviews, I may not add a whole lot to it, guys, to be entirely honest. I will go over what changes are going to be made to the knife for the full production. There are quite a few changes, and I'll show off some size comparisons that hopefully you haven't seen anywhere else. With that being said, let's get into the Null Knives Raiden. All right, guys, so let's go and take a closer look at the Raiden. Uh, now, if you've not been here for one of my recent full reviews, I will have B-roll running while I am talking, so you can really get a close-up look of this knife. With that being said, I'm going to have some specs pop up for you, and let's go ahead and take a look. We are looking at a 3.25-inch blade, 4.25 inches overall, a 0.13-inch, um, it's going to be your blade width, so at the very top of the blade, and then your handle width is going to be 0.48 inches. Now, we have all that specs. We, we also have an M390 blade. Love to see it. It is flat ground. I will get into that in a bit. And you are looking at 3.82 ounces on the Raiden. Now, those ounces are probably going to be subject to change because he is making um, some changes to the weight. But before we get into that, Let's go ahead and uh, do a few size comparisons so we can really see what we're looking at here. So first up, guys, the one that I think everyone is going to know is going to be the Benchmade Bugout. Bugout is very similar in size, and in fact, it is flat ground as well. Your Bugout is 0.5 inches behind the edge. Guess what the Raiden is? 0.5 inches, 0.5 millimeters, I'm sorry. 0.5 millimeters on the bug out, 0.5 millimeters on the Raiden behind the edge. So they're the same. Never hear anybody complain about the bug out behind the edge, so don't worry too much about the flat grind, guys. Uh, next, let me go ahead and tuck him away. Let's jump up in price and move up to the ZT0562 tie. Now this was uh, anodized by Witty over at USA Made Blade. Very similar, but you are looking at a 0.6 millimeters behind the edge on the 0562 tie, and obviously 0.5 on the Raiden. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck him away. After that, let's take a look at what I consider to be one of my favorite knives under $300, the F5.5. Now, this particular one in brass, I believe it's brass, um, it runs the exact same price as the Raiden. That's some heavy hitting competition with, between these two. Um, I'll talk about which one I would pick um, and whether you should pick that one as well. Um, but just wanted you guys to see that really quick. And also, F5.5 is 0.5 inches behind the edge. 
Uh, next up, we are going to look at the, oh gosh, the Vero Synapse. Now this is a Gen 1 Synapse, give you an idea of size. And once again, 0.5 um, behind the edge on both of these. Let me go ahead and put that out of the way. And then we have uh, what I think is one of the cooler knives in this category. A uh, little bit over 300, you are looking at the Wear Knives Lucas P. Now this is gonna be 0.3 behind the edge because it is a hollow grind, 0.3 uh, millimeters, I do apologize. Um, but just wanted to give you a size comparison. And then my current favorite flat ground knife, but this is coming in at 350, so $50 more than the Raiden. This is gonna be the Renegade EDC God of Mischief, the GOM. Go check out that first impressions if you have not already. Okay, so all that is out of the way. GOM is 0.5 millimeters behind the edge, exact same as the Raiden. Guys, it, it cuts. It cuts and cuts and cuts for days. Uh, I used the Raiden to open mulch bags and was able to clean it right off. I had no problems. It ripped right through even with gloves on. I was very happy with it. So now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and talk about my thoughts before we talk about changes. My impressions of the knife is it is a great platform for the design to start on. I'm going to put it that way. When I open the knife, I like where my hand indexes. I index in a good spot, you know. When I take it in and out of pocket, I can flick it right open, reverse flick, thumb flick, left hand, right hand, doesn't matter. Feels good getting in and out of pocket. I do not have much of a problem with it. I did have some snags because of where the, it sit on my jeans, but not a big deal, not enough to notice. Uh, I like the texturing that you have on the lock bar opening um, and all the little details here are nice. But I do think there are quite a few changes that need to be made to this knife. Now, all the changes that I wanted to make, I mentioned and uh, gonna make them, which makes me very happy. But I was obviously, you know, at the end of the list for uh, as far as reviewers making suggestions. So let's get into the changes that are actually going to be made. So first up, the thumb studs are going to be shortened and widened. I agree, right now they're a little tall and pointy. Uh, the jimping was going to be a bit more aggressive, and I absolutely agree. It's just kind of there right now. Um, it kind of feels like what I got on the EMP Nimble, and if you watch that, guys, you know I don't like that. Uh, next, he is going to do some weight reduction in the back spacer, so the balance point is closer to the pivot. I absolutely agree. It's a little far back right now. Um, he is also going to extend the front choil. And what he means is the flat spot right where that blade meets the handle. So you have a little bit more there. Um, also the tip of the clip is going to be chamfered a little bit more, not as pointy. I didn't really notice it. And he's going to soften the detent ramp. Um, so it's not as aggressive, which I absolutely agree because as of right now, it's a I have to kind of push the blade a little bit far for it to fully engage. So we're looking right about there, you know, here-ish there. And then I can see how it bounces back. So it has to be there. I do agree with all of those changes. Once all those changes have been done, I think this is going to be a great knife. I think this is a knife that could compete in the other like designer category. So, you know, everything I showed you guys, but also you're talking about Arcane Designs and, you know, something obscene, um, maybe even Chavez Knives. You're looking at all of those, you know, maybe even Brian Browns, um, but it, it can really compete. Now, do I think it's on the same level as Brian and Matthew Ware? Not quite, it's getting there. It's very close. I think with the changes, it's gonna be a very competitively looking knife. I do love the blade though. The blade is the highlight for me personally. Um, I love a spear slash harpoon blade. It's probably my second favorite uh, blade shape outside of a Warney. Um, so really do like the shape. Now with all that out of the way guys, let's go ahead and uh, take a cut from my final conclusions. Okay guys, so I uh, saw some specs, size comparisons, the changes that are gonna be made to the knife for the full production and uh, what I think about the knife. So the question is, plunder or plank? So this one is going to be a plunder. I did pre-order one, I am very excited about it. But if it was in its current form and not with all the changes, it would be a plank. I would not keep it. 
I think that the platform is right and the direction it's going is good. I do like that. Um, but I think it has a lot of stiff competition from 250 to 350. That like range, it's really, really tight in there, guys. Um, ZTs, especially older ZTs like the 0562 tie are just money. Um, the F5.5 is great. You also have Protect Malibus. Um, if you're willing to go over, you're looking at, you know, anything from Vero, Arcane Designs, uh, you know, wear knives, and my personal favorites right now, uh, the Renegade EDC knives. I, I love the GOM. Um, I would take the GOM straight out of the box that I have the prototype over the Raiden. But with the changes that are coming to the Raiden, I think it's going to be a really good knife. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Go ahead and give me a like, comment, and subscribe. And you know what, guys? I'll catch you on the flip side.